the judge gave Mr. Shorty 15 years. Um, he was facing life in prison and the government had requested 25 years. Um, I believe based on Mr. Shorty's tragic background that, that the judge did the right thing and showed him some leniency. And we didn't quite hear, you guys requested he be sent to a certain facility, is that right? It, Segoville, it's a, it's a facility in Texas that, that has um, sex offender treatments. Ultimately, will that be up to the Bureau of Prisons to sign? It, it will. Um, the judge can make a recommendation, but ultimately it's based on where they have room. Is there 10 years of supervised release? Was that what we heard correctly? Th that's correct. It was basically 15 years in prison. He'll get credit for the year that he's been in. He'll have to serve 85% of what's left and then he'll be on probation for 10 years when he gets out. Did you get a chance to speak with uh, Shorty? What did he tell you? In a difficult case like this, where he was looking at life in prison and the government wanted between 25 and 30 years, um, we were hoping the judge would show some leniency and he did. This is a tragic case all the way around uh, for my clients, for the public, for everybody involved and um, we appreciate the judge listening to, a, to um, the evidence and making what we think was a fair decision. Well, did he tell you anything after the sentence came down? Did you have a chance? I'm not gonna say what my client told me after, so. Well, did he think it was fair? He did think it was fair. Think it was fair. <laughs> we believe it was a fair sentence. This morning, you also brought in a witness. Um, just talk to us a little bit about what his role was and what he speak about. We hired an investigator in this case to look more closely into Mr. Shorty's background and what what the general public, um, but for this, never would have, sorry, the, the, the general public, but for this case, would never have known that Mr. Shorty grew up in poverty on a Native American reservation in South Dakota. Um, they would never know that he was subjected to horrific abuse by a series of stepfathers and boyfriends of his mother. Um, they would never know that he was shot by his brother when he was three years old. And all of those factors, the, the poverty, the tragedy, went into um, the behaviors that led us here today. Tell us a little bit about his testimony. What did you think about it? You know, the... I, I thought what he had to say was very heartfelt. Um, he. He didn't make excuses. He he asked for forgiveness. He he said that he would respect anything that the judge decided, and and in the end, we do. You and the judge have said this case is tragic. That word keeps getting thrown around. How come? It's tragic because my client overcame so much from his childhood to become a business owner and become a state senator, and and those demons that followed him from his past led to the self-destructive behavior. So at this point, his life is destroyed, his family's life is destroyed, the victim's life is destroyed, and and, and you've got somebody who, who did everything he could to do the right thing, but couldn't overcome his past. As far as placement goes, forgive me if you already brushed on this, why did you guys request that one? proximity to Oklahoma. It's it's going to be important for him to be able to see his kids and at the same time it's, it's going to be important for him to be able to, to get the treatment that, that the judge uh, ordered. Clearly his family is very important to him because he can very visibly, you can hear him sniffling, mm -hmm. you can hear the, the crying. Uh, it seems like that's... That's truly the most tragic part of all of this is is his wife and his kids they didn't ask for any of this, and I can I can tell everybody that throughout the course of this, how much he let down his family and and the effect it's had on them is something that he has been the most concerned about. He was far less concerned about the overall outcome, whatever the judge decision was going to be. His true concern is for his wife and his children. And he also talked about how this is affecting the public as well, having a, a distrust with people of his nature. So how does he, as well as other uh, people of his, of his, of his uh, statute, be able to get that trust back from the public? That's a tough question. Um, I think that you have to look at 
all elected officials as individuals and it doesn't matter what you're elected to they're still human beings and they're still human beings that have have past and backgrounds that that affect their behavior up until present day and you know i think that you know i, I like to think that the public understands that that just because one or two or three or more politicians do something that they may not like, that public service as a whole is an honorable profession. You suggested in the sentencing memorandum, I take it because the government responded, that um, he was uh, prosecuted in federal court for spectacle. Those were the words that they said that you said in the sentencing memorandum. Do you mm -hmm. feel that way? And what do you mean by that? I believe that especially in light of the judge's comments uh, in court today about um, evidence being filed openly and not under seal by the prosecution that had the prosecution wanted um, more facts of this case to remain in the courtroom and, and, and outside the public view they could have. However, uh, the prosecution chose to file both their sentencing memorandum and their reply to my sentencing memorandum uh, in public and included in that were police reports, were pictures, um, were, were statements of a graphic nature that had absolutely no bearing, in my opinion, on what the judge was going to decide on today. If he'd been still prosecuted in state court, he would have gotten a lot less than 15 years. If he'd been prosecuted in state court, he would have gotten far less than 15 years. And this was a very serious case, but given the magnitude of cases that you normally see in federal courts, this was far below what's normal in, in the federal courthouse. Given what he was convicted on child and sex trafficking, are you worried for his safety in prison at all? He'll go to a facility where almost everybody else there will be sex offenders. So they, they do that on purpose for that very reason. And he will have to register as a sex offender, I'm assuming. When he gets out, yes. For life? Yes. And also I believe there's another hearing date for money to be paid? For restitution, the judge hasn't set that date yet. Uh, federal law says that that in any case involving a minor child, uh, the court has to hear evidence as to if, if any money's owed, and we don't know when that's going to be. Mr. Short, Mr. Short, are you back for that? Yes. Where is he held right now? Chickasha, Grady County Jail. Well, he, I'm assuming he has to stay there for a little bit before he gets moved to he'll, the... He'll get taken to the Federal Transfer Center out by the airport, and then from there he'll go to uh, whichever facility um, they put him in. Do you know when that specifically? No. Okay.